Well, I'm going to go in and wake Obed up, and you never know what you can find in there. <laughs> Obed is 13, and he's the cutest little guy you ever met. It's minty fresh. It's minty fresh. You like that, don't you? We dress him. We feed him. We bathe him. Everything. I know. Are you hungry? We're going to go down and have some breakfast. Are you a hungry boy? He's got a lot going on, but he's a very happy boy for... You know, he just kind of takes everything around. He's very chill. He takes everything in stride. <laughs> I'm good to go. There. Come on, everybody. I'm going to wake my sister now. Good morning. It's time to get ready for school, Abby. Okay. I'm going to get myself ready for work. And... Okay. They're roommates. And Abby, although Abby can do most things herself, she does need a lot of prompting and, you know, encouragement for every step of the way. First I put mine on, and then after I'm done, I put Abby's on. <laughs> My brother David taught me how to tie shoes, and it's really easy now. Hi, I'm David, and I'm the son who's away at college. What's it like to be at college? Um, it's pretty fun. She counts on me to do it, and I've been doing it for a while now. Who helps you in the morning? Um. Um. Hannah. Plus, I love her and she's my roommate. Mornings can be crazy at our house because we're trying to get ready for school and work. Bethany is 19 years old. And uh, she's from Thailand, originally. I get dressed independently and brush my teeth and comb my hair. Now, we're gonna go get Jesse. He's smiling, that's a good sign. I see a smile on her face. Are you in there? Go. Jessie just turned 18. I don't have favorites, but she's my baby. I have to basically do everything for her also. I have to get her dressed. And um, she she has an eating disorder, so she's capable of eating, but she doesn't really like to eat. As somebody sits down and watches this video of a day in your family's life, what's the most important thing for them to keep in mind? Kindness is somewhat of a disability, but at the same time, um, just look at us as a normal family and look at all the things we do um, and just, you know, kind of realize that we do the same things just a little differently, you know. Hot coffee coming through! Hot cup! Hot cup! They kind of announce where they are and what they're doing to each other. Partly, mm -hmm. I, it, it's it, sounds, thing. it sounds polite. When they're asking, you know, that, hey, I'm going to go get napkins and, you know, you can sit here or whatever. Um, but I think a lot of it is how they let everyone else in the house know where they are. Hot. Abby, hands down, hands uh, down. Don't touch uh, anything. Don't touch. Don't move a muscle. It's hot. It's hot. Three, okay. two, one. Bingo. Delicious. <laughs> we have the same kind of coffee cups, and the coffee cups are in the same place, and the same dishes are stacked up in the same cabinet all the time. They know everything about the house. They know, you know, every room and where the TVs are and where the, you know, where everything that they need. I mean, just like anybody, anybody would. Everything needs to be where it belongs so that the kids can find it easily, what they need. Do you enjoy breakfast together in the morning? Yes. Of course, yeah. It's very relaxing, actually. <clears throat> we make each other laugh all the time. <laughs> <laughs> the funny thing about Abby is that <laughs> she likes to 
Um. <laughs> hey. <laughs> um. Sucking cup it. <laughs> You're on camera. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he makes me laugh so hard that I start, that my eyes start watering. <laughs> <laughs> we all wish we could be as young as Hannah. She's, uh, she's 24. She acts younger, a lot younger. Um, mm. She has a spirit and a spunk in her and an energy and a zest for life that, you know, it's, it's, it's like a teenager. And... A preteen. Or like preteen. I know, I'm getting carried away. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Bus come. Uh, six, 45. And time bus come. This is your backpack. Okay. All right, grab your cane. This is cane. Make sure you get the right one. Oh, it's on the right one. Yep, that is. Okay. All right. This is door. All right, let's go. Okay. All right. In the morning. In the morning. Are you excited or do you want to go back to bed? Oh, excited. What are you doing? Um, waiting there. Wait there, got noise. Oh, I hear it. So after everybody gets up and eats, they go off to school and work. OBIT is in a small self-contained class with other students who have uh, different disabilities. Are you ready, OBIT? What season is it? Is it summer or is it winter? Yeah! Good job! You found Winter! My name is Mr. Robinson and I'm a Obed uh, teacher. Next to us. Fire extinguisher! You have to work with him according to his ability. Or what he have to work with. We get water from this. Okay? And it will extinguish all the fire around. You understand? what's going on in the classroom. And he's, he's a very smart kid. Flammable or fire extinguisher? What did we talk about right now? <laughs> very good, we spoke about fire extinguisher. Good job. Just because someone's blind, they can't talk, that's, 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 not, that's not saying that they are stupid, they dumb. No, they're very intelligent. You just have to know how to deal with it, communicate. Is it Saturday or is it Monday? Very good! Jessie's favorite class is music therapy and she looks forward to it every single time. Hello to Jessie. Jessie, hello. Jessie, hello. One more time, Jessie. Hello. One more time. Hi, my name is Julia Sullivan. I am the board certified music therapist working with Jessie. Jessie is happy. What is music therapy? Music therapy is the use of music to work on non-music goals. So music activities you might see in music therapy can be working on different things with communication or motor. Jessie's happy today, Jessie's happy today. Happy, happy Jessie. Your turn to strum the guitar, so reach. Reach and strum. Good work. Go. I have 
seen Jessie progress quite a bit, and I know that um, the previous music therapist working with her saw her progress by leaps and bounds, um, going from lying on the floor and unwilling to engage to sitting up straight, um, engaging in a full 45 minute session. Is it okay if I ask Chris. you a few questions on camera? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Do you like making friends? Yes. Abby was actually found in a trash can. She was screaming her full head off, thankfully. Um, and the police officer took her to the orphanage. She had, um, she, it's hard for me to talk about this, you know. Do you like to be alone or do you like friends? Oh, I like, From there are <laughs> times that Abby will just start wailing and crying in a very, very loud way. Doesn't happen very often, maybe once or twice a year even. It's not even that often. Not anymore so much. But you know, if it wasn't for that wail and that scream, she wouldn't be alive today. When you're around people, are you happy or sad? Uh, happy. When you're alone, are you happy or sad? Uh, sad. She's lucky to be alive. I mean, she really, when I say Abby's a miracle, I mean, it, you know, to, to have the condition that she has, the genetic condition that she has, and to have survived that and thrived in spite of it, to have been left the way she was to be found and to and to live through that and, and thrive in spite of it <laughs> and find her way home halfway across the world. She's a miracle. I'm Mr. Rodriguez and I'm Abby's teacher. What's it like to be Abby's teacher? It is one of the most amazing things in the world. She was actually the first, we have, you know, case managers for special education students and when I first started teaching, she was my first student that I case managed, so I was in charge of her and making sure she was all taken care of, and I think Abby will always have a special place in my heart for that. I like coffee, period. I like tea, period. Her braille is more sight word based. I like hot tea with Sugar, period. She saw me working with her when she was reading in the book. Those are a list of words and pages that she's able to read together. So she is able to read and she is able to comprehend what she's able to read. Can I put on some music while you work? Yes, what yes. What do you want to hear? Oh, oh, oh. Breaking ball? Oh, oh, every day. Every day? All right, you gotta stay focused and work hard, okay? Every day, if we get closer, going faster, then when we're colder, not like you, we'll simply come way here, way, eh, hey, eh, hey, hey. So we teach her how to fold, we teach her money skills, we teach her
how to cook sometimes. So hopefully those skills will be beneficial for her down in the future. Every day, if we get closer going faster, we're the closer, nothing I do with, can we come with right here with, uh, hey, uh, hey, hey. Nothing I do with, can we come with, right here with, uh, hey, 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 hey. Are you done? Yes. Thank you. You're welcome. How has the idea of being adopted changed as you've gotten older? Um, uh, I, I think when you're like a um, little kid, uh, it's just a thing. It's like, oh, okay, well, now you're my parents, so, you know, that's, that's awesome, right? Because you get a home and everything, and you, you know, you get, I think that's all you, you know, people want is like, uh, security and safety but then you know as you grow older um and you know for me i've you know in the back of my mind i i kind of you know wonder why my parents of course you know gave me up bethany's a senior in high school and she's taking uh, ring reading and english and comprehension um, and also she's preparing to go to a vocational center next year i'm miss k and i am bethany's english teacher the camel said I am tall, so it is easy. What is Braille? <laughs> Braille is raised dots. The pig said, and I, and I am so sure that... Oh, I'm so sure I am right. Are you happy with everything at school? Yes. What are you happy about? Friends and teachers and all the um, uh, materials that my teachers provide me with. Anna has a job. She works five days a week in a bakery and coffee shop. The most important thing is to um, remember where everything is in relation to where everything is. Like, where the, so an instance, this, the tool chest is right directly behind me. And I can hear people washing their dishes. And the sink, the sink bay is kind of behind me and to my right. And I can hear the stove in the oven sort of to my left. She started um, at Cameron's Coffee and Chocolates, which is a very special place, uh, about a year and a half ago. We're making a um, strawberry uh, muffin. Oops, here. And then I'm using my talking scale here. Got it, Kels. Awesome. My name is Kelsey Sohail. Um, I'm Hannah's job coach. How do you make sure you don't bang into anybody when you're walking around the kitchen? So um, I just tell everybody that I'm coming up either behind them or next to them or or in front of them. She's learned so much. I mean, since when she, you know when she first started, she tried to figure out the place, and um, but now she's able to to do. Pretty much everything. I mean, she just needs verbal prompts, really. Just trail with the back of my hand like I do at home. What's trailing? It's like um, using the the back of the hand or something. And it like if you're touching like surfaces, like other surfaces, it's it doesn't get anything dirty. Is that how you get it around at work? Yeah, it is. David is 19. He's now a uh, freshman at George Mason University, and he is living on campus. This is his second semester. What's it like to be in this small little dorm room with roommates? Um, it can be fun. Uh, honestly, we mostly keep to ourselves a lot of the time. But you know, uh, you know what's great is if I ever need like help with like uh, my computer or something, I can just call Matt or Eric over, and they're really helpful. He has two sided roommates. Um, so he is living the college dorm experience um, as a um, 
as a freshman. David was the first person that like I've had to have like contact with in terms of having being with a blind person before. So I mean, that, this was quite an interesting experience to have with them. What have you learned living in this small little room with David? Um, I guess it's just like, I always expect that I'd have to help him with a lot of things, but David's definitely done a lot of things on his own. So like he sometimes will just go out for like Southside by himself with um, Brian. And then like, he says we help him a lot, but I mean, I don't help him like too often. He manages to do it on his own very frequently. So David gets around campus with a variety of different kinds of technologies. He, so of course of all, he uses his white cane. uses another application uh, called Nearby Explorer, which is designed for blind people. And he actually can point it to the direction that he's going. The app will tell him which direction to go. How do you describe the function of the cane? Uh, mostly I'm just sliding it to make, uh, to make sure there's like a, a shoreline or make sure there's no obstacles, you know. I, I basically know where all, you know, Matt's stuff is, where all Eric's stuff is, and I just know where my stuff is, and I try to keep my um, uh, little corner of the room contained, you know? So like, on the on the hooks where we keep all our clothing and stuff, um, I'm the first one near the door, and then, you know, it's everyone else's, and then for drawers, mine's just like right beneath my bed, so it's pretty easy to tell where everything is. As the only college student of the adopted children, do you feel like an outsider? Uh, in my family? Yes. Um, no, I would say um, I get along with my siblings very well. I always try to help them out as much as I can. And, you know, uh, I'm like not musically talented at all. So, you know, sometimes I'll ask Hannah for, you know, I'll defer to Hannah on like musical things. <clears throat> can anybody find me somebody to love? They do come home from school one by one. come in and get their snack and just kind of chill out. wish you could see? Um, it, it's not my best wish. I, I like I like this way. Yeah, me too. No matter what problems I'm going through, I can just stay happy most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> What are Jessie's diagnoses? Jessie, well, of course, she has uh, retinopathy of prematurity, 
and she, um, Jessie has autism spectrum disorder. She has intellectual disabilities. <laughs> She has a musical repertoire that's amazing. Unbelievable. She probably knows 50 songs, maybe 80 songs, that uh, will just come out of her, out of the clear blue sky. She had a doctor this year, a neurologist, was talking about uh, that she has some savant, you know, characteristics tendencies. and tendencies because she's got her musical therapy, which is really important to her, um, can draw, you know, into some of her, um, you know, mental capacities that we can't understand how the connections are made, but the music therapy has really helped to bring that out. Mm -hmm. Woo! Woo! Can Abby travel independently within the house? She can. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of our kids can except for Obed. Hi. Chris. Hey, Abby. Hey. This is downstairs. Yep. Since all your siblings are blind, does that mean they need help getting around the house? Um, no, they pretty much, um, just like me, they've basically, we've memorized um, how to get around our house and um, um, how to navigate and things like that. So um, at this point, we can basically all just go wherever we want. More. Stairs. At dinner time, it's kind of uh, it's it's almost like an orchestra because the kids the kids come in. They know that um, you know there's there's a lot of pieces and parts of 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 feeding this number of people. So Obed does not eat independently. So there are times that we get to work with him, and um, he'll try to use a fork or spoon. So he kind of knows what to do, but he's not in control of all of his muscle reactions because of his cerebral palsy, right? So he has spastic motions, but he kind of knows what to do. Let's try. Let's try, Obed. Okay. Watch this. Okay. Want to try? Try. Okay. Go ahead. See, he knows what to do. Good job. Good job. Away. Um, I eat my food independently is by um, the, the format of where everything is, imagining, a, again, a clock. So the meatloaf is between 11 and 12, which is kind of left and straight up uh, above. Then the peas, and some at 6 too, but the peas are at 5. Four and five, and the mashed potatoes, I ate them all. Um, they used to be in between one, two, and three, and maybe even four, but I ate them all. <laughs> After dinner, everybody heads upstairs one by one. Okay, one more time. Nighttime comes pretty early in our house. Normally on a school night, you know, by 7.30, you know, these kids are up and they're ready to, ready to go to bed. I love you. I love you too. Good night. I would just say, I love you. And I just finally, you know, I would start leaving off you. 
I love, and I would just wait and wait and I'd say it again and then I might have to finish it again and start over and say it again and then all of a sudden one day she said, you. Good night. Good night, buddy. All right, I'm gonna lock you in. Into your safe bed. What inspired you to adopt six children that are blind? We certainly never sought after adopting a child who's blind. That just no. happened. It just happened. Each time it just happened. Coincidentally, each time. Good night. Good night. All right, I'll see you in the morning. See you. All right. Do you need another kiss? Yeah. <laughs> Ended up in our home, you know, because of, you know, whatever it's a problem. Circumstances. Or Circumstances, and they found their forever home, and uh, they found their, their siblings, and, um, you know, they became a family. They, they needed their brothers and sisters just as much as the they needed us. The kids became a family. They the came together. Mm -hmm. And we were assigned to be their parents. It was a long day from 5 p.m. No, from 5 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. That's a very long day. <laughs> so we kind of drift off to sleep. <laughs> What's the last thing you think about before bed? Um, the last thing I think about is my next day and how well it's gonna go. Do you think the world's a good place? Of course, yes it is. Why? Because in my world, everything sounds so happy.